So is the card counter something you should go all in on or fold early? Let's find out. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watch or Pass. I'm going to tell you about The Card Counter, a new film coming to theaters on September 10th, 2021. It stars Oscar Isaac, Tiffany Haddish, Ty Sheridan, and Willem Dafoe. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the film, three things I like, three things I didn't like, and then talk about the ending. So as you can expect, there will be spoilers in this review. So if you don't want to know anything about the film, you want to go in and kind of learn more about this mysterious character, then uh, you know I would recommend either turning this off or go read the written review at watcherpass.com. I, I go into much less detail on the written reviews. If you if you want to know more about the film or maybe you've already seen it and you want to know um, some of my thoughts on the ending, uh, Annie up. We're going we're, we're gonna to go all in right now. Uh, so the card counter is a mysterious film uh, involving this kind of quiet, uh, you know, shrouded in mystery character, Will. Uh, William Tell is, is how, you know, who he introduces himself as, who's this phenomenal poker player. He, he can count cards. Uh, it's because when he was incarcerated, he had a lot of time. So he learned how to play poker, how to count cards, how to do, how to, you know, get the odds for all these different poker and blackjack hands, all these casino games. He just has this kind of innate at this point, because he's been doing it for so long, knowledge of gambling and card, card games and like the house chances versus your chances, how to increase them. And so he's a very interesting character. He's also very regimented. Um, you know, he was previously in the military, as we find out. Uh, and his life is very, you know, he, he moves around, but he kind of keeps a similar pattern in what he does. He goes to a casino. He'll win enough to, you know, get a little bit of money, but not enough to really kind of draw the ire of the casino or get kicked out or anything like that. Um, and then he will go to a motel, sleep there, and then kind of move on to the next casino in like a circuit kind of thing and he also has a lot of very particular uh practices in the hotel that we see later on you know he wraps all of the furniture in like sheets and ties them down uh so it has kind of this you know covered look in his hotel room and he also travels very sparsely he doesn't seem to have any family really any friends he sees people in the poker tournaments that he recognizes but he doesn't really interact with them much and so he's kind of the, has this loner existence that's kind of constantly moving you, know, you could think of him like a card shark right he he's just has to constantly be moving doesn't want to stop can't stop just kind of keeps going about his life and passing the time uh he is introduced uh, fairly early on to uh, Kirk with a C. It's C-I-R-K. He makes a point of saying his name is Kirk with a C in the film, played by Ty Sheridan, who uh, you find out he is the son of someone who served with Will when he was in the military. So you find out pretty early on that both Will and uh, Kirk's father were stationed at Abu Ghraib and they participated in the enhanced interrogation, torture uh, of these uh, Prisoner, prisoners of war, or I guess inmates, I'm not sure what, what you would call them, but they participated in this. And they were both featured in the infamous pictures that leaked out. And so they kind of took the brunt of the blame for the entire incident. Uh, and you know, the mastermind, this person named uh, Gordo, played by Willem Dafoe, is kind of skirted by. He kind of slunk into the shadows after this whole buildup and then, you know, is still kind of living his life. But um, Will went to prison for about eight years and uh, Kirk's dad, who was dishonorably discharged, I don't think he served time in prison, but he was dishonorably discharged. Um, it kind of spiraled his life down. It, it killed, you know, he ended up killing himself. It tore apart his family. Uh, so early on, Will and Kirk kind of meet up uh, and Will takes him under his wing and kind of has him come with, come to the various casinos with him to I don't know, give him company. And also maybe he's trying to teach him something. I'm not, there's not, it's not hundred percent sure what the reason for this uh, partnership is, but he takes him on and they start kind of going through the casinos. You, all right, you also early on meet Lelinda, who's played by Tiffany Haydish, who is a, she's a kind of a smooth talker. She's a businesswoman. She proposes to Will uh, that she will back him in his tournaments and so you know, there's i guess there's this established relationship in a lot of poker circles where you have backers who will front the money for your tournaments and then you split the winnings uh with them and and will is initially opposed to this because it's apparently a bad financial decision but eventually he, he needs the money to kind of jump start his poker winnings he says he wants to get a nest egg so he teams up with lalinda 
and they start uh, playing some poker tournaments. And he, does, he doesn't want to win big. He doesn't want infamy. He just wants to play for a year, get his nest egg, and then leave. And that's kind of where you you the, the main characters come from in the card counter. Uh, and so the, the film is about Will going to these various tournaments. He kind of opens up a little bit more to Lalinda. He helps try to kind of mentor um, Kirk. Uh, and he plays poker and, and the, you know, he wins a lot. He's very good at poker. So he wins uh, and he kind of, as, as he wins and as he goes through these, uh, you know, as he becomes closer to these characters, you learn more about him and his background. So three things I liked about this film. The first is, uh, the first thing I really liked are the characters, mainly Oscar Isaac's character. I really loved uh, the character of Will and kind of his regimented life, his mystery. Like there was a lot of, there, there were a lot of, aspects of his life that just kind of felt odd and, and you thought clearly like there was some explanation but you didn't know it at the start um he, you know the way he plays poker the way he explained the various games his demeanor at the table like he is a very interesting character he's very regimented uh he's very kind of he it's, he almost has like a set of rules and he, he bends them occasionally but for the most part he lives by this set of rules which essentially you know, play the odds win win a little bit at the casino and then move on um, and he, he doesn't seem to really have any friends, any desire to kind of you know, settle down. He just kind of wants to keep moving and keep passing the time. Um, I also really loved the music. Like the, this film has this amazing kind of background soundtrack throughout it. And uh, some of it is, it's almost kind of otherworldly. It's, it's very interesting to see these like, uh, you know, reno and atlantic city and some midwest casinos and things like that you know this, they're not the most sci-fi type places but you've got this kind of almost sci-fi soundtrack playing when will is going to these casinos and playing poker it's a very kind of striking unsettling but also interesting music that's paired with this and then there's also there's also some kind of like soulful songs as well and occasionally there will be um you know, there's a metal song here and there. Like the music plays a key role in this film. It kind of keeps the story moving. It kind of it sets the stage. It heightens the mystery and it heightens kind of the the, the, the intensity of the poker uh, games. And it's really something that you notice. I mean, it's it's interesting because you don't notice it, but the one thing you do, it's really kind of it heightens everything about the scene. And then there's also later there is one poker game where there's absolutely no music which i thought was very striking because it's, it's something that you kind of grow accustomed to and then they take it away for this one game and it kind of heightens the impact of or it amplifies the impact of that one game by in its absence which i thought was very interesting and also it was, it was a really great technique to make the audience pay attention right then uh the third thing i really liked is the style uh, so the third thing I really love is the style of this film. And it's, it is a very stylish film. It's, it's kind of an, a, a minimalist style uh, because of Will's character. Will's character doesn't have that many possessions. He has the same kind of wardrobe every time. He wears his gray suit with his black tie. He slicks his hair back. Uh, Oscar Isaac's character has this kind of salt and pepper look. And so his suit kind of matches his salt and pepper hair, which I thought was a, a nice touch. Um, and then you also have like the style also permeates uh like the poker game uh and and this you know will's kind of done up proper character is an interesting contrast with the you know casinos that he's playing he doesn't play in like the highest end casinos he plays in pretty much anywhere he can where he knows he'll be able to uh make make some money and then bounce before anyone gets mad and so it's interesting to see this like person in this perfect suit in these, you know, I guess less than stellar establishments, I guess, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're your normal run-of-the-mill off-strip casinos. And so I thought that was kind of an interesting stylistic touch as well. And then also when you are introduced to the, the, the prison, the Abu Ghraib prison, you get some flashbacks there. And there's this fisheye lens that is an interesting touch. It kind of puts you off your balance because it, you know, it gives you a good view of everything that's happening, but it also makes it clearly show that it's some sort of either dream sequence or like memory. It really easily lets you know that this is not happening in real time because of the, the the strange look of it. And I thought that that was a really good touch. And and the Abu Ghraib prison is is you know very compellingly done. Like they they go into they showcase some of the uh, enhanced interrogation or torture techniques that that were happening. 
they they show some of the atrocities that were happening it's it's a very striking scene that kind of stands out in will's regularly put together and regimented life um so i thought all those together kind of contributed to this film's overall style and really kind of gave it something that uh that, that, that was instantly kind of striking uh when, when i was watching it so uh, three things I didn't love about this film. The first is the, the character changes, and there's a few big character shifts. The first is when Will takes uh, Kirk with a C under his wing, and that was that was an odd shift because Will had been, at least as far as we know, I mean, this was early on, so he didn't know his character that well, but he has a set of rules. He doesn't travel with anyone, um, and he seems to only play enough to kind of subs to, to survive, essentially. So him taking on someone else, and helping to give him gambling money and, and paying for his room and all of his expenses, that seemed like a pretty big endeavor for him. And you don't really understand why he did this. And you, you kind of get an idea as the film progresses, but it also still seems kind of out of character with Will um, and, and what his goals are. And then later, uh, you, you find out that he's playing this, you know, I'll get into this in the ending, but he's playing these poker games to help out Kirk again it's strange that he's doing this I guess he him his Kirk's father and Will both serve so there, there's probably some level of loyalty there that uh is, is not really explored that much but I guess it's implied so I guess that's probably why he took him under his wing but it, it did seem like a strange act for Will to do uh, because it didn't seem like Kirk was you know, Kirk was kind of ambling around, but he wasn't in like dire straits. So it seemed odd that, that Will would take him under his wing and try to, um, I guess, take care of him, help him out. It didn't seem like the character that we'd gotten to know earlier. Uh, and then also towards the end, there are some very abrupt character changes that kind of fuel the ending. And I'll go into those in a second. That just, again, felt very off with what we had known, with what we had known about Will and what will had been building and part of the re you know the reason he was doing all of these poker tournaments so uh, the second thing i didn't love is kind of the intentional mystery uh that wasn't explained like I, I liked the fact that will's character was mysterious he had these weird quirks um but you didn't really get a full explanation of why some of these things uh were there and you know like the the, the wrapping of the furniture was an interesting odd uh quirk about him but you didn't know why. I mean, the only hint you got was when you went, when eventually you saw Gordo's house, Gordo's furniture was all wrapped that way as well. So I guess presumably Will maybe picked this up from Gordo. But I don't think Will had ever been to Gordo's house. And when they showed uh, reenactments of Abu Ghraib, which were very well done reenactments, like they were, they were unsettling. There was this fisheye lens. Uh, oh, actually, I should put that in the, in the style. Um, but, you know, the, the, they were very unsettling. There was this fisheye lens effect that wrapped in sheets. I mean, I guess Will did talk about how it was always dirty and how there was this, like, a, this stench that permeated that, that prison. So I guess maybe you can make the leap that he did that to kind of make sure that everything was clean. But he didn't, he never really mentioned it. And you don't really know other than the fact that Gordo did it. But there's also no indication that Will ever went to Gordo's house. Uh, so things like that. Uh, some of his rules, you kind of, the audience is left to come to the conclusions of, of why he's doing that, but uh, you don't really 100% know why. Um, so I guess the main thing was the the wrapping of the furniture, because that was, that was actually a very striking thing that he did, and I really liked it. I just wanted to know why, and then I guess we never really learned why. Um, so the ending. So the reason I didn't really love this film is the ending and I, I think i'm probably gonna be in the minority here because i just looked at the rotten tomato ratings and people seem to love this film i thought the ending just kind of went off the rails it, it kind of maybe it went all in and you know didn't get the right turn i'm trying to use poker terms here but so what happens is you have will he, he is now playing poker because he's trying to get this nest egg and you know originally he said that he wanted to kind of build his own nest egg and then he wanted to leave the professional or more kind of celebrity poker tournaments uh, after one year. He gave himself one year. Eventually, he is at the hotel and he asks Kirk with a C to come talk to him. And they go into his room and his room is, you know, done up the way it normally is. Uh, but Will sits Kirk down and starts doing a light interrogation. He uses some of the techniques that he learned at Abu Ghraib. And it's actually a very 
striking transformation for him because he is usually so put together and then seeing him kind of become aggressive he doesn't like do anything too crazy to kirk he doesn't hit him he just kind of he does force him to sit down and then raises his voice and kind of threatens him uh in certain ways but he goes through this really quick and and very striking transformation uh and so he basically tells kirk uh he makes him a proposition and he basically says um he essentially tells Kirk that he will let him kind of give him the financial capability to restart his life. He says he'll pay off his college debts. He'll give him the money to go back to college and finish up college. And he'll also pay off the debts of Kirk's mom. And all Kirk has to do is go and see his mom. I thought this was, you know, it was, it was a touching situation. If we would have had some hint of this, I mean, you, you get the sense that Kirk is, he has, he has debts. He couldn't go back to college and he's also a little unmotivated. So I understand where Will is coming from, but before this, you don't really get the sense that Will is going to kind of take him under his wing as a father figure. He kind of is a mentor, but uh, this, this seemed like a big jump for him. And also, you know, up to this point, you were under the impression that Will was trying to build nesting. Now, I guess maybe his whole, the whole idea of this was to help Kirk and the timing does line up. Like after he met Kirk, he did then go reach out to Lalinda to try to get into the more, celebrity circuit but again this is a pretty abrupt change and it basically meant that all of his winnings were going to kirk this person that he had essentially just met so it did seem like a very abrupt switch now maybe he just wanted to have kirk come along and teach him some skills and then as he got to know him uh he you know wanted to help him more but again you also don't see many instances where will and kirk share some sort of connection like kirk is usually either sitting watching will play poker or he's off doing something else you don't really get a good sense of their familial relationship which i thought was then odd that he would then give him one hundred fifty thousand dollars to help him start his life um but in any event kirk agrees mostly because it's a lot of money and also because will says if you don't accept this offer you're not going to like the other option so kirk agrees uh he calls his mom and then he goes off you know out of the picture he's presumably going to go meet his mom the, the thing was he had to go meet his mom um so later will is playing in the world series of poker he, he made it to the world series of poker because of how well he'd done in the circuits and i think after the first day i think i think he's at the final table at this point or at least knows he's gonna be at the final table uh he gets a text from kirk who is going to his mother's house uh, and it says wish you were here and it includes a picture and the picture that it includes is of Gordo's house, the the person who kind of ran Abu Ghraib. Uh, he was a contractor, so I guess he didn't face any punishment like the military folks did. Um, and so Kirk had had this idea to go and uh, make Gordo pay for what he'd done to his father and his family. And you thought that at this point Kirk had given that up, but apparently he didn't. He was at he texted the picture of Gordo's house and said, "Wish you were here." Uh, so Will is shaken by this. Uh, he goes to the poker game that he has to keep playing that night and he plays for a little bit but then eventually he just abruptly leaves he kind of says i need a minute and leaves and it's a very interesting you know scene because he'd been so put together in everything else like every other game he'd always kind of played it cool he would always had a plan and this one he just kind of like abruptly leaves uh and the poker people like you know as you would expect are kind of confused by this but you then see will looking at a news broadcast where they're saying that you know, a, a home in Rockville, Virginia, which is their combination place that uh, Major Gordo lives. It's, you know, Rockville's a city in Maryland and Virginia's a state that's right next to Maryland. So I guess they just combine them. Unless they, maybe there is a Rockville, Virginia, but I don't think so. I think it's probably only a, you know, I, don't, I think that it was a made up place. But in any event, you see a, a news article saying a house in Rockville, Virginia was, you know, broken into the, uh, assailant i guess i don't know what they were what they called him, the burglar maybe had a pellet gun and he was shot by the owner so presumably kirk broke into the house i don't know if he was going to try to get revenge and use the pellet gun to try to you know get him get the uh, gordo to do what he wanted and kind of subdue him with a fake gun or if he was just trying to scare him and didn't realize that gordo would have a real gun i don't you don't know what happens but presumably something along those lines happened um so then 
Will abruptly leaves and he drives to Rockville. Or he, well, he abruptly leaves and he drives. You don't know where he's going, but eventually you find out he ends up at Rockville. So Gordo returns to his house in Rockville. You know what it looks like because you've seen the pictures. Uh, and, it, and Will is there with a gun. Uh, and Will basically tells him that they're going to go into the other room and they're and one person is going to leave alive. The presumption is Will. So they go in that room. You hear grunts. You hear some, you know, uh, some sounds like fighting and or uh, some sort of scuffle. And but you can't really tell what's happening. And then the film kind of fast forward to the day and Will leaves. You see Will walk out of the room. He, he is clearly hurt. He has, I think his, his hand is pretty messed up. And I'm not sure if they like took turns torturing each other or if Will was like trying to torture Gordo and then maybe Gordo you know fought back you don't you don't know what happened but Will leaves and he's he's pretty he has a pretty bloody hand he's got some bruises and and cuts throughout and he calls the police and he says I'd like to report a homicide and he gives them the address Uh, and then that's kind of where the main story ends and then you flash forward a little bit and Will is back in prison he's back in Leavenworth in his jumpsuit and he says the thing that he said at the very beginning of the film. So it's actually kind of a nice, like, poetic linking there. He says, I never thought I would be someone suitable for incarceration, um, which I thought was a nice way to kind of conclude, you know, dr- draw that connection from the first part of the film where you saw him in incarceration again. Now, I don't know why he went to Leavenworth, because at this point, I don't think he was a military member. He wasn't, you know, on orders. He wasn't working for the military and and Gordo, the person that he presumably killed was a contract. He was a retired military person, but he was not an active military uh, individual at the time. He he retired and he was now a contract. So I don't know why he would go to Leavenworth. I guess I'm not, I'm not up to date on my military justice. I'm not sure if this would actually, if he would have actually gone to Leavenworth or would have gone to, you know, I guess a Virginia state prison because he committed murder in Virginia. I don't know. That was in, odd, but it also it also let everything come full circle because he'd been in Leavenworth before for eight years, so now he was back. Um, and so he's in prison, and the guard comes up and says he has a visitor. And so he goes into the visitor's area and sees LaLinda, and she is visibly upset with him because, you know, they had become close. Uh, they had eventually slept together, um, but she was also backing his his poker but she also believed in his ability and he left very abruptly like he didn't tell her where he was going he just left presumably she found out because i imagine it was all over the news um but he did not leave in a good way and and this as far as we know is the first time that that they're seeing each other so uh she looks upset but then she eventually kind of does a half smile and they put their hands up against the glass like their, their fingers specifically touch you know touch on the glass so it's like right there and then the shot just kind of holds for a very very long time i think i think you're sitting there for like two minutes and it is a full shot because you can see their fingers moving so it's not like they pause like they actually shot this shot um and then the credits start rolling and their fingers are still touching throughout a good portion of the credit so overall their fingers are touching for like i think seven or eight minutes something along those lines and that's the end. That's the end of the movie. And so, you know, I guess the, the the film was well done. It was stylish. It was interesting. I just didn't love this ending. I thought this ending felt very off uh, because of what you know about Will. You know what you know about his uh, circumstances. I, he didn't seem to like prison, although he did regiment his life. I wasn't sure if that was a prison thing or a military thing. Um, but he didn't seem to love prison. He seemed to like being out and being able to freely move around the casinos and and live his life the way he was so the fact that he would willingly kind of go back to prison felt odd i guess maybe he liked that routine and that year uh when he was playing the poker tournaments maybe that messed with his routine he he didn't he didn't like that aspect but he also was getting close to uh to lalinda like they 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 clearly had formed a relationship they had finally slept together and then he basically throws that all away to go kill gordo who you know i guess he was a major influence on will's life and he did force him to go to prison the first time but it seemed that he had moved on from that um so the only thing that gordo did was kill kirk which 
was probably not good, but it, it doesn't seem like something that Will should have been thrown away his life to enact justice on. I just felt odd. And then also the fact that, so the fact that he would then go and do this and, and basically throw away everything he had built. And he seemed to be getting pretty happy. Like he seemed to like um, helping out Kirk, or at least he, you know, he was, he was at least playing poker to do that. And then he also seemed to like uh, getting close to Lalinda and, and having that relationship. So it just seems really strange that he would then throw it all away to enact revenge on someone that he had seemingly almost forgotten. Like he, he, he still, I guess, it seemed kind of odd that he would then go and throw away his life to enact revenge on Gordo. Now, I guess Gordo was a big part of his life. Will and Kirk met at a talk that was being put on by Gordo. And I don't think Gordo recognized either of them, but that's where they kind of first interacted. Um, so, you know, Will clearly still had Gordo on the mind. He saw that the per- he was that Gordo was speaking and he went and sat there at the at the lecture. And I don't know if he went there specifically for that or if that just happened to be a coincidence. But it did feel like his character was building towards one path and then he just abruptly threw it away. He didn't finish the poker game, which I thought was also kind of an annoying aspect because I wanted to see how he did against his nemesis, his his nemeses. The film had some really great kind of poker personas and some of them kind of followed uh, Will through the various poker games just because they were all playing the same circuit. Um, so you don't get to find out how he did in the final of the World uh, Series of Poker. And then also, Will seemed to like to live anonymously. Uh, his, his whole persona was set up so that he could kind of move around and not draw a lot of attention to himself. Uh, and then, but then he goes and does this kind of heinous crime and calls it in. So presumably, he is now going to be well known because the news will come. I'm sure everyone will know who he is. So now he is no longer going to be anonymous. So again, it's the ending just felt very different from everything we'd known before. I mean, it had hints of things that occurred earlier in the film, but the, the ending itself just felt like felt like a abrupt turn. Uh, so that that's why I just didn't love this film. I, I, I liked the characters, I liked the acting, I liked the style. I just the ending and the story just kind of went off the rails for me. But that's the card counter, you know. Apparently, I'm in the minority. A lot of other people seem to really love this film. So let me know in the comments what I got wrong, what uh, what I should have appreciated more. Or if you agree with me, let me know that as well. I'm, I'm curious to hear people's thoughts because I think this will be a film that I am in the minority of. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review and want to go all in on my other content, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot and make sure all my new stuff goes straight to you. Thank you.